Hey folks, Ray from DCAmerica.com here. Today I'm here to show you how Garmin Pay works. Now Garmin Pay is Garmin's new contactless payment system uh, that's loaded onto the Garmin Vivo Active 3. They launched about a month ago, starting to ship now. Uh, what Garmin Pay allows you to do though is to take credit cards and load them onto your watch. And we've seen this in the past on the Apple Watch, for example, and other watches out in the industry, but this is really Garmin's first watch in doing so. Uh, they're following Fitbit as well, which is also their first watch in doing so with the Fitbit Ionic. Uh, and the goal here being that you can go out for a run, come back from a run, uh, and have your credit card information already on the unit itself, or at least the ability to pay with the, the watch itself, so you don't necessarily have to take your wallet for with you. So you can go stop at a Starbucks or a convenience store, whatever you want, with just the watch. Uh, pretty cool stuff, but there are some caveats to be aware of. Uh, before I show you how it all works in real life, a couple things to keep in mind is number one, it depends on your bank. Uh, so your bank is a piece that is most important here. Garmin has to set up a relationship with your individual bank. And that's true as Apple, of Apple as well. Uh, and that takes a little bit of time because you think there's I mean, thousands, tens of thousands of banks in the world. And unless your bank is supported, it doesn't do any good. Uh, and it's not just a, an alignment to Visa or MasterCard or Amex. It's actually to the bank issuing behind it. So in the US, that might be Chase uh, for your bank or whatever it may be on the back of your card in the bottom left-hand corner there. That's the bank that matters. Uh, and in this case, there isn't very many banks yet supported by Garmin. I suspect as we go into the first quarter of next year, 2018, we'll see a lot more banks. Uh, but today, that's actually, unfortunately, quite limited. Uh, and that's really the same as what it was for Apple as well. When they launched, it was kind of limited. And it's also the same for Fitbit as well right now. Uh, it's super, super limited. So that's the first caveat. The second caveat is finding a place that actually works with contactless payments. Uh, here in Paris and in France in general as well, those are fairly limited. There's a lot of merchants that may have the contactless payment readers, but getting them to work, not so much. And in fact, in my area here, there's only like two or three, and even those don't seem to work half the time. Uh, so that's another limitation. Within the US, it tends to be a lot better. There's a lot more readers out there, and they generally tend to work uh, for the most part. Loading your card into the device itself is pretty easy. You're going to use the smartphone app the same as you would uh, when you're doing it with the Apple Watch or with the Fitbionic or any of those other watches out there today. You go ahead and load the card into the app and then the app then goes and pushes it to your device and you're good to go as soon as it's approved by the processor, which generally takes just a couple of seconds. Then from there, you can go ahead right to the merchant, to your store, wherever you are, and use the device. And to do that, to access it um, on the device, you just simply hold down the button there on the side for a couple seconds, tap the wallet icon, you enter your pin code, and then you are good to go. You'll see the screen here. You hold it next to the reader. You've got a limited time to hold it next to the reader. And then it taps it and it should take like less than a second. Um, a couple differences though, in the case of Garmin, you have to enter that pin code every single time you want to use the wallet. Whereas with the Apple Watch, uh, it's basically until you take the watch off. So you enter it once and as long as you're wearing the watch, it stays on. With Fitbit, it's kind of a combination of the two, where as soon as you take off the watch, it requires a pin code, and then every 24 hours, it also requires a pin code. Uh, and so there are, again, some more differences there in that Garmin does not require a pin code for the rest of the watch at all. It's just for the wallet portion, whereas Apple does require a pin code for everything else once you load a credit card in, the same with Fitbit. So some pros and cons there, back and forth, depending on how often you might use uh, the wallet functionality compared to the rest of the watch. So with that, let's go ahead and off to a store, and I'll show you how this all works. Okay, so here we are, one of the only places that actually has contactless payments in Paris. McDonald's. Yep, that's the way it's going to roll here, folks. So I'm going to get started here by tapping that. No, I'm not a frequent flyer of McDonald's. I'm going to take my order to go, and then we're going to find something to eat here. Uh, but the only thing I'd want to eat is dessert. Um, in particular, on dessert, a McFlurry. Uh, so there we go up there, and now we can choose the McFlurry type. Let's see, customize it. Uh, I just want vanilla ice cream and we're gonna go with uh, speculos because that's, that's pretty much gonna be awesome uh you want any sort of we want any, any goodness on there yeah why not let's add some chocolate sauce okay so here we go it's out of the total you can validate and finish up our order uh, you can see up there total we gotta pay and then we'll finalize our command or order sorry um in this case i'm gonna pay by credit card is the way it works here so i tap that and then now here on my watch it's gonna go and ask me down to the screen right there well, there we go, so it's asking me to pay. You can see that little uh, icon there, that's the contactless payment icon. I'm gonna hold the left hand, or the right hand button, sorry, on for just a second, and that brings up the uh, dashboard, if you will. And then I click the wallet option right there, and then it asks me to enter my passcode, so I'll do that real quick. There we go, passcode's entered up, and then I just enter it into the reader. It's accepted, it's, it's really that simple. And it's syncing, and it's accepted down there, which is good. 
And there's my order number up there. And all I gotta do is walk over there and get my McFlurry. Oh, here's my receipt. You can see my receipt right there. Okay, so here we go, we got the McFlurry. Uh, no real issues with it. I mean, it works pretty darn well. It's pretty quick. Uh, one of the cool parts is in the final version that's now released, it's now public, and Garmin Pay is now live. Uh, you don't have to enter the code in except once per 24 hours. So you don't have to do it every single day or every single time you do it, just once per 24 hours and you are good to go. Um, overall, not too bad. I think it's one of the challenges though is still the fact that there's not that many banks on it. Garmin's hoping to get a lot more banks on starting really early in 2018. They've got a pretty long line of banks they're hoping to get onboarded. It just simply takes time, just like it takes time for Fitbit and everyone else. Apple's obviously way ahead of the game there. So with that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and like that like button down the bottom there, as well as the subscribe button. There is plenty more sports technology goodness. Maybe a little McFlurries. Have a good one. And for the record, those aren't my McFlurries down there. Not mine. Someone else's McFlurries. What can I say? They're good.